Yes, my name is Rabbi Cass, and I am a cipher. What what letter are you boys learning this week? Sama. Sama. What what does the letter Sama say? What? For what? Cipher. For a cipher. Who knows what a cipher does? Write the alphabet in the secret table. Write the alphabet in the secret table. What else does a cipher make? In what? In what? In the chat. In the secretary we said, how about a mezuzah? Yeah. yeah. Okay, how about a megillah? Yeah. yeah. How about um, tefillin? Yeah. 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 How about a, in a sukkah? Yeah. 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 No. Does <laughs> well, a sukkah have an olive base? No. Yeah. 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 Okay, fine. So, okay, so I'm right. Megillahs, secretaries. Mezuzahs and the filling. So today I'm going to show you a little bit about that, and I'm also just going to show you what a samach looks and, like in a real safe and, and center. In order to make a tyra, makila, mezuzah, or to fill in, we need to have clap. What else do we need to have? Piece of cloth, and I'm going to tell you boys in a minute what cloth is. And I take a feather and I take ink and I put it down on the table. Is it going to write a, a Tyra? No. What do you need? You have to write uh, a cipher. Right? So, I, I don't know. A father can't write on his cipher. Exactly. A cipher has to write, has to write the Tyra, right? Okay, so, don't know anyone who knows that thing. So, exactly. Right. So, I want to tell you first what, what a cipher is. So, Cypher is somebody like myself who writes all the Tyra, Gila, Zosa, and Tefillin. But do you know? Well, that's written inside. Do you know who taught me how to be a cipher? To the type of school. A type of a cipher school? Actually, there isn't a type of there isn't a cipher school. I'll tell you who taught me. His name is my teacher. <laughs> Exactly. That's a very good question. How did my teacher know how to write Tyra's? You know who taught my teacher? His teacher. <laughs> so how did his teacher know? How did my teacher's teacher know? Who taught my teacher's teacher? His teacher. <laughs> and, and who taught my teacher's 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 teacher? <laughs> Anybody want to guess who? A teacher. His teacher. And who taught my teacher's 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 teacher? His teacher. And who taught my teacher's 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 teacher? All the way back, all the way back to the first teacher. Who was the first teacher? Who who was the first? Hashem. Hashem, Hashem taught who? Who wrote the first Sifrei Torah? Hashem. We know Hashem wrote twelve Sifrei Torah, one for each Shevet. Hashem taught Moshe how to write, and from teacher to student, teacher to student, teacher to student, all the way from Moshe Rabbeinu, all the way to me. And so what I'm about to teach you today, and what I'm going to show you today, is coming straight all the way, straight back, from Moshe Rabbeinu and Hashem. Okay, so I'm ready to write my Tyro. How, do I know how to write a Tyro? Because my, my Rebbe taught me. Exactly. Now, what do I need to write? Tyra on. Somebody said parchment. Parchment in Hebrew means is cloth. Who knows what parchment's made from? Is it regular? You're right. It's an animal skin. Now, could it be from any kind of animal? Or does it have to be a special kind of animal? What has to be special about this animal? One that's kosher. One that's kosher. Everything that we make a tyra from has to be kosher. So can I take the skin from a lion? No. Why? Is that the skin from a bear? No. no. Why? It's not it's not it's not why? And I'm a bite you and I'm a you before you take it off. And I'm a bite because I am a lion. Not kosher. His name is Arya because he's a lion. Oh, your name is Arya because you're a lion? Okay. You're, you're strong. You stop it. Are you get up in the morning and you say my da'ani and you're ready to come to Cheder and to learn? <laughs> Amazing. So, the 
skin that we use has to come from a kosher animal. What are some of the kosher animals we use? Cow, cows, sheep, sheep, goat, goat, goat deer, deer. You could use deer, yeah. So, so I want to show you. This is what parchment looks like. It's white and it's crinkly. And I want you boys to feel it and feel how soft it is. But I want to tell you that after I let you feel it, I'm going to try to explain to you how this is made. Because this does not look like a skin to me. Does it look like a skin to you? No, no. it's not that fur. And the fur doesn't look like a, a, real, a real skin. I so first I want you to feel this. And when, I, when you look at it, I want you to notice that if you look closely, you'll see that there's actually the lines. Lines which are... I feel... I see lines? I see lines? I see lines? Those lines, help, those lines help me when I write the Torah to make sure I write all the letters straight. So that's what these lines are. And you can touch it, you can feel this. It's a kind of a... Okay, so... Who wants to see? I brought with me my pet sheep. Who wants to see my pet sheep? He doesn't, he doesn't bat anymore. Look at this. This is my pet sheep. Now this used to be on a sheep once, and the sheep used to run around with this. Bad. Some are real sheep. This is wool. Where's the cloth? Is this the cloth? No. Is this the cloth? No. Yeah, you see this? This is what we make the cloth out of. We have to take off all of the wool, and we put it in a special chemical that makes the, the skin a little more firm. And this is how we make the Okay, so I want you to feel that my... It's cozy. It's cozy, right? Mm -hmm. And make sure you also feel the, the side from the parchment. It's soft? It's soft like kala. Soft like kala. That's the first. No, it's cozy like a kala. So if I want to make the Torah, the first thing I have to do is we have to make the parchment. How do we make the parchment? We take the skin from a kosher animal. We take off all of the wool, or if it's a cow, we take off the fur. And when we're done with it, it looks like this, a piece of parchment. On the back over here used to be fur or wool on the back. And now, I have the parchment ready to write. So if this is my Tyra, I'm going to take... I'm going to be careful with the Torah. Yeah. I'm going to take my feather. Who knows what bird this is from? My fur. Uh, uh, a did it come from an eagle? No. Why? It's not a kosher. Of course, not a kosher bird, right? So, what bird does this, does this come from? Who knows who comes from a kosher bird? Chicken, okay. What, another guess? Anybody else? Bird. Chickens have very small feathers. So, I, I think of a bird a little bigger than a chicken that's, that's still kosher. Pigeon. Pigeon. Bigger, bigger. We have them running around Muncie. Sheep. We have them running around Muncie. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Yeah. <laughs> Deers don't have feathers. Turkeys. You ever have to see turkeys running around yeah. watching the big girls? Yes, exactly. And the turkeys have, are big birds and they have very big feathers. So why does it matter if we take from a big bird? Because we want to have the bigger the feather is, the more ink the feather to hold. And then, the longer I could write a line without having to dip and dip again. So we use turkey feathers. So the feather is also from a kosher bird. So like the parchment is from a kosher um, animal, the feather is taken from a kosher bird. A kosher bird. Yeah. I want to show you how the feather is cut. Look at the feather. Can you see that, how a special cut? In order for the ink Slanty. Yeah, it's slanty and it's pointy in order to allow me to write nice sharp letters. So I have my turkey feather. Now what do I need? I need ink. Ink. A lot of different ingredients go into the ink. Who knows? Who could guess what makes the ink so black and so dark? Anyone want to guess? What makes it? Chocolate. Well, 
well, there's lots of special ingredients that go into the ink, but what makes it black is ashes. Who knows what ashes are? Fire. Right. After a fire burns on the side of a glass and it makes it all black and it makes like ashes on the glass, we scrape it off and we put it in the ink, and that's what we make the ink from. How is this for being hot? What? The, 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 the ashes make the whole thing hot. Yeah, and once that, they cool off, that's when we put it into the other ingredients to make the ink. So now I'm going to show you boys, now that you know how a turret is made and what's it made from, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you boys my sacred turret. Well, who's ready to see my Tyro? Me! Are you sure you're ready to see my Tyro? Yeah! <laughs> Why are you laughing at my Tyro? It's not real. Why isn't it fake? It looks, it looks soft. Why is it fake? Because Tyro's are not soft. Who can tell me why this is not real? That it doesn't open. What's inside of here? Stuffing? Stuffing, yeah. Just nothing. What does a real tire have to have? A cloud with a ink letters that were written by a cipher. So this is not a real simple tire, right? It's cozy. It's cozy, but it's not a real simple tire. Let me yeah, see. I have Let me see what else I have in my bag. Maybe I have yeah, something looks cool. I have one. I have. I have one. Yeah. Who says it's a fake one? Why do you say why do you say it's a fake one? Because always fun with them. Right, because although this looks a lot more like a real one, I'm gonna open it up and show you that it doesn't have the clock and the letters written by a cipher with a feather and ink. This is printed on a paper. Okay? So let me show you. Oh that's the garden. That's the garden, yeah. So if you can open this up. This is not written by a cipher, this is printed by a paper. by a printer on paper. Now, I, I don't want to disappoint you boys, because I did tell you that I was going to show you part of a sacred tarot. And I did bring parts from the sacred tarot, which I'm going to show you. But who knows, why did I, why could I not bring a real sacred tarot that's done and ready to use the show? Why? Why, why, did I not, why did I not bring a real sacred tarot? Where is the proper place for a sacred tarot? In the Aron In the Aron Kaddish in the show. Where is that in the show? Is the Aron Kaddish in the back or is it in the front? Front. Why is the Aron Kaddish in the front of the show? Where does the rub sit? In the back. In the front. That's the most kosher. That's the holiest place in the show. Is in the front. So the holiest and the, the most proper place for a sacred tarot is in the Aron Kaddish in the show. So I don't want to make, you know, not have public the tarot to bring it out of the show, out of the Aron Kaddish. So I wasn't able to bring a real tarot to show you, but I do have parts of the sacred tarot, which I'm going to show you. Now this is going to be going in a sacred tarot soon. And this is part of the sacred tarot. You see here where it's sewn, there's separate pieces over here. Can you see that? See this over here? See my finger? Yeah. yeah? This is called the urea. This is called a section of a sacred tarot. So it starts here, and it goes to here, and then it's sewn together. How many pieces like this big do you think that there are in an average sacred tarot? A thousand. Not that many. A hundred. Sixty-five. Sixty-five pieces of parchment, that's what it takes to make a sacred tarot. Do you know how many columns there are in a tarot? See these, these roll of letters? All these columns. How many columns do you think there are in the Torah? A thousand. A little more than a hundred. A thousand. 245 columns. 245 columns. See all these letters? Yeah. How many letters do you think there are in the Torah? A thousand. 999. More. A lot more. A thousand. The last number. The million. The last number. The million. I don't think you're going to be able to count. I don't think you're going to be able to count. 304,805. Say it again, say it with me. 304,805. Do you know why a cipher is called a cipher? Who knows what cipher means? It's a 
Okay. Special. Who who speaks? Does anybody over here speak Hebrew? Me. Me. What does Miss Bar mean? I know. I know. Miss Bar means a number. Sofer comes from the same shoresh, or same shor root of the word. Um, Sofer and Mispar come from the same shoresh, which means to count. And the, one of the reasons why a Sofer is called a Sofer is because we have to count to make sure every single letter is written in the Torah. How many letters are there in the Torah? 304,805. I have to count it to make sure it's exact. Let's say I have a Torah with 304,804 letters. Is it kosher? Why? Because it's missing a letter. Let's say I have a Torah with 304,806 letters. Is it kosher? No. Why? That's one extra letter, right? Yeah. So everything has to be exact, it has to be counted. That's why a sofer is called a sofer. Now, I want you to look at this Torah here. And tell me if you can see a sama. With, with your eyes and not with your hands. You see a sama? Maybe you see a letter from your name. Do you see a letter from your name? Do you think when he gets big, he's going to be big like his tati? 
Yeah. Or is it going to stay the same big its whole life? Same big. Right, same because big. So that means that the mezuzah, once you put the mezuzah in the cage, you can't read it. Okay. You can't read it. It is very hard to read, but it could be read. Watch me put this in the case. Okay, so when I have the little baby mezuzah roll, it goes in the cage just like that. Put on the plug. Put on the plug too? Okay. So, just quickly, I want to tell you um, to fill in also, when you have to fill in, which your tatis or your, your brothers are wearing to fill in every single day already, the to fill in, when you open it up and look at it, you don't see any parchment. Who knows where the parchment is? Inside. It's inside. You can see here how it's so closed. And inside the tefillin is the special parchment. I see the parchment. I'm not sure I have it here. Let me see. I have to look in my bag. Okay. And here also is the other tefillin. And inside is also the special parchment which goes inside. Oh, your head. Let me see if I can. And also what we're writing is a Megillah, which a Megillah looks also very much like. I ain't doing it already. So, oh, you want to see me write? Already. What Okay, so should I write a little, some letters for you? Yeah. Can you write some letters? Yeah. Real parchment. Oh boy, we have over here a nice big piece. This is huge. Okay, so what do I have to do? I have to open. And you could use the ink. And then put the feather inside. Okay, so we're going to do one letter for every group. Yeah. Okay, so if this was a, a mezuzah, what do I need to do before I start writing? I have to say, I already praise of the shame to just mezuzah. What's the first letter in a mezuzah? Shin. Okay. I'm going to write towards you, boys, so you can see me writing the shin. Very good. Let's do this. So, 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 so,